any further, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, again, we want to thank you for the privilege to be in your presence to study your word. Without your Holy Spirit, Holy Father, we would have no knowledge, no understanding, no wisdom of your word. So again, we are inviting your spirit to rest upon us in a copious measure. Open to us what we cannot understand from your word that we may grow in your grace till Jesus comes. In his name we pray. Amen and amen. Before I go any further, I want to introduce you to our study group. Our study group for today to my right is Sister Marsha Cherubin. And we are missing one of our members. Um, Kayla is not here this morning, but we have Sister Marilyn Mitchell. We pray by God's grace that um, you study your lesson and you are ready to, um, to listen and to participate. And in addition, if you have any questions, you can always um, email us your questions um, so we can go over it as we study the lesson. Uh, this week's lesson is Education in Arts and Sciences. Sunday's lesson focuses on the Lord alone. Monday's lesson, the beauty of holiness. Tuesday's lesson, experts in error. And Wednesday's lesson, foolishness and wisdom. And Thursday's lesson, the Lord answers Job. Our memory text for this week is taken from Psalm chapter 19 and verse 1. And we know this one pretty good. The heavens declared the glory of God and the firmament shows his handiwork. Besides the Bible, nature reveals to us every day the handiwork of God. It reveals him not only as creator, but it also reveals him as sustainer. God is not just creator of everything, but he sustains everything. The lesson also tells us for, for such an education truly to function, we need God's word to inform the teachings of every di discipline from humanities to molecular um, biology. Oh, how important it is that we study everything through a Christian perspective, through an educational perspective. So without the Bible, without the Bible leading us through this education, it is highly possible to lose sight of God's enormity, his sovereignty as creator and sustainer of our, of our world. So we must incorporate Bible in all that we do. That's how we'll better understand God's will for our lives. So our, our discussion today focuses on some principles involved in how we can teach the arts and sciences from a Christian perspective and a worldview. With this, uh, we're going we're gonna to go to um, Sunday's lesson, The Lord Alone. The lesson begins by saying this, Sister Cherubim and Sister Mitchell. There is evidence of the living God in all of his creation, meaning there is an existing person who made all things, and creation reveals that. That person is called God. Is this, is this really true? Do Creation reveals that there is an existing person that creates everything? Yes. Because some, the Bible, the Bible doesn't prove that God exists. The Bible assumes God exists. And here we are. And if we look at creation, and if we study creation, creation proves that there is an existing being who not just created everything, but who sustains everything. The life that we live, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100, 900 years, it is God who sustains us to live this life. Amen. Um, when we look around us in nature, you know, the flowers are there, the trees are there. Um, during the fall, it looks so beautiful, right? the different colors that are falling. The Lord is the one sustaining and keeping everything, even the air that we breathe. And so even though you may not know the book, the Bible, 
back to front, you can look around you because there's so many evidences of uh, the Lord's working in nature, which reveals the God of heaven to us each and every day. Uh, I mean, education in arts and science. I am not into arts. I'm not into being artistic. But when you see they have a display in a museum and people that are in, into art, they see a picture and they start referring to the picture. The color means something. The stroke means something. The detail means something. It's so much education and I'm in awe. I don't see the detail in that, but people that are into it, they see all the detail, all the beauty, all the thoughts that were put in it. Somebody created that piece. Somebody created that piece. And also science. When you look at the complexity of the body, the detail, the organ, the DNA, it's so complex. Somebody created that body, but you know, when you go into nature and you see the detail of the beauty of nature, the mountain, the hill, the valley, the, the, the stone, the rock, the ants, it's so complex. This is by chance. And the Bible says in Psalms 91 verse 1, the heaven declared the glory of God and the, the firmament show of his handiwork. And in nature, the, the, the stars obey where God placed them. It's functioning every time there. It don't change, it just shine. The moon shine, the river flow down. It's, 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 it, the, the sea roar, everything in nature. And they obey God. And human beings that are so complex that have a mind to think, they're denying the God that created all this. And this is by chance the heaven declare the glory of God and the firmament show of his hand. were God and God alone. Wonderful. You know, the lesson tells us that biology tells us that new intelligent human life emerges from one fertilized egg and grows to full gestation after nine months. And your mother, sister, um, sister Cherubin, you can testify of that. Uh, the marks of a loving creator are all throughout this cycle. The loving kindness of God can be seen in the place that, that a fetus developed, right below the steady beating of a mother's heart. As the fetus enlarges, so does the mother's abundant, um, abdomen, right out in front of a person. The expectant mother is made always aware of her child, just as our Heavenly Father is always aware of his children. So this tells us arts and sciences can be best taught when we consider the heart of God in creating our world. For example, the lesson says, when a woman gets pregnant to the time she gives birth, she is well aware that there is a being inside of her, maybe a boy or a girl, you know, back then, um, the woman won't know whether it is a boy or a girl, but now she will know after a few months if it's exactly a boy or a girl or two or three mm -hmm. or how many the Lord has blessed, blessed her with. And for us to deny scripture, to deny, to deny that God exists, it's an unfortunate thing we can ever do um, to ourselves. In, in, Psalm, in Psalms chapter 19, verses 1 through 3, it tells, us, it, tells us, it tells us something very peculiar. The heavens declared the glory of God and the firmament show of his handiwork. Mm. But he continued by saying, day unto day, day unto day author of speech and night unto night is show of knowledge. There is no speech, no language where the voice is not heard. So I guess none of us are ignorant of God being the creator and the sustainer of everything. He is indeed the creator of everything and the sustainer of everything. So I believe if we study nature, if we study arts and sciences through scripture, we'll have a better understanding and know for certain that there is a creator who creates everything and also who sustains the things that he created. And also Jeremiah, I mean Nehemiah chapter 9 and verse 6 says, Thou, even thou, are Lord alone. 
Thou hast made heaven, the heavens of heavens, with all the hosts, the earth and all things that are therein, the seas and all that are therein, and the, thou preserveth them all, and the host of heaven worship thee. The host of heaven worship thee. And in addition God to that, God my God sister, it is one thing to read the scripture and believe what somebody, somebody writes like me and Maya. But the evidence is right before, it's our, right very before eyes. our eyes. We can see it. We can experience it in our, in our lives and know for certain that there is a God who, who created everything and who sustains everything. Let us go to Monday's lesson, The Beauty of Holiness. The lesson tells us, the Psalm, Psalm 96 verse 9 tells us, Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. And I believe worship is the most awesome thing anyone will do in their walk with God. In fact, our walk with God should be about worship. If you, if, if you profess to be a Christian, every hour of the day, every day is about worship. The life that you live is all about worship. The, lesson, the question is, from the beauty of of the creation we can learn about God and indeed his, his love of beauty. But the question is asked, how do we understand this concept, the beauty of holiness? How do we understand this, con this concept, the beauty of holiness? Because the lesson says, or the psalmist says, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. So, as Christians, if we understand that there are things that are holy and there are things that are unholy. If we understand that there are things that are considered clean and things that are unclean, we will have a better idea and understanding when the Lord tells us to worship him in the beauty of holiness because he's calling us to holiness. And so there's another text that tells us set no wicked thing before my eyes. And so when we understand the word of God calling us to a higher level, a higher level than this world accept, um, we would have a better understanding of our calling because our characters have to be in line with the character of Christ. And so as much as we don't have no holiness or no righteousness, in any of us because the Lord told us our righteousness are as filthy rags and so we are to strive each day each moment for that higher level of holiness that the Lord desires for us to obtain his character on a daily basis so that's my intake on the beauty of holiness aspiring to do better and strive higher and higher to attain God's ideal for all of us. To be like him. To be like him. Yes. And God created the heaven. There is so much beauty in, in creation. I want to look at our eyes, the beauty of our eyes. It's God that created that. So we find beauty in the one that is holy. Not the things, but the one that created the things. There is beauty in it. You know, beauty is revealed in two, in two ways as Christians. What we do and what we say. In Psalms 96, um, we read verse 9. It says, worship, worship the, the Lord, Lord in, in the, the beauty, beauty of holiness. Of holiness. Yes. But if you read verse, verses, verse 8 and 10, the one in between, one in between, verse 8 and verse 10 says, give unto the Lord. The glory due unto his, to his name. Bring, bring an offering and come, come into his, his court. Now, you, you are doing something. Mm -hmm. Verse 10 says, yes. Say among the heathens that the Lord reigneth. Mm -hmm. The world also shall be established that, um, that it shall not be moved. He shall judge the people with righteousness. So beauty of holiness consists of how we worship God. By beholding, mm -hmm. we are changed. And... And living the life and testifying the life that we live in Christ. Telling people how good a God is. People see, will see something in us that is different from the world. 
So they, they, see, uh, they, they see something that is holy. Because you're worshiping God in the beauty of holiness. Do you see something that is holy? Something that is awe. Something that seems to be out of this world. As a result, they want to be a part of it. And that's wonderful to know. If we can learn more about our identity, draw closer to the character and the heart of God in Christ, in, in, in studying arts and sciences, I believe we can be a better people. But if we separate arts and sciences from scripture, from nature, we'll find ourselves learning something that is contrary to God's will, and we will never be the people that God wants us to be. Another thing the Bible tells us, um, and, and the lesson tells us, we, we, study, we study in the beauty of holiness. Not everything that is beautiful is good. So we must be very careful. Genesis 3 um, verse 6 tells us that when Eve saw the fruit, she saw how beautiful it was and how pleasant it was to the eye. So she took of it. Guess what? She ate the fruit, the forbidden fruit. So beauty through the eyes of the beholder may not necessarily be good or holy. And we must un un understand that. There are some things that is placed before us. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. It looks beautiful. But is it good? <laughs> and is it holy? Well, <laughs> we can relate this to so many different things. Um, music, right? Music sounds good. But is every music acceptable before God? No. The lyrics, the words... Okay, um, in worship, when it comes to a certain reverence and a way the Lord wants things to be done, just because it's beautiful and the example of um, Cain and Abel, okay, fruits are a wonderful thing, right? Uh -huh. Fruits are delicious. They're beautiful to look at, like your example, you know, with Eve. But was that what Christ required? No, it wasn't. And so not everything that is beautiful would be accepted or considered good before the eyes of God. Amazing, amazing, isn't it? The lesson tells us, as with everything God has done, we have an enemy that, who distorts and exploits it. It shouldn't be surprising then that beauty and concept of beauty can be used against us as well. Thus, especially in the arts, Christian education guided by scripture must help us learn to be careful in understanding that all, that not all that is beautiful is necessarily good or holy. And Proverbs, uh, Proverbs tells us about not lusting after, beautiful, or after a beautiful woman in our hearts. But beauty is the woman who fears the Lord or the man who fears the Lord. You know, you, you might look at a beautiful lady or a handsome man and you might lust after her and you might desire that um, young man or young, or young lady. But beauty is the man who fears God and who walks after his will. With this, uh, let us go to um, choose this lesson, Experts in Error. Would you like to read the first um, paragraph up? <laughs> we know that our world has more than its share of art and philosophy that does not honor God. Many would argue that Christians should not enter these proverbial tents. Seventh-day Adventist Christians must carefully consider their own business in serving certain industries, patronizing certain establishments, consuming certain media. Wow. So as professed Christians, there are some avenues of this world we must strongly avoid. Mm -hmm. Striving to be rich like the Joneses, seeking for fame like the entertainers in Hollywood and in the, in the sports world, just to name a few. If we find ourselves running after these things, we might fall in love with them rather than being in love with Jesus. In First Timothy, 
chapter 6, verses 9 and 10, Paul says this. But they that will be rich fall into, into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful errors from, and let me read this again, and hurtful yes. lusts which drawn men into in destruction and perdition. Mm -hmm. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which, which, uh, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many oh. sorrows. Is the apostle only referring to the love of money? Or everything that we put before God? Everything we put before God. Can you imagine you're an expert in science and people in awe of your intelligence, but it's error, and that leads a lot of people astray. So a lot of people are good at what they do, but is it pleasing God and error, what error does to you? It, it leads you astray. So we have to be an expert in depths of the Lord, not in the things of the world. Because they have a lot of experts out there. And even in our own realms, they have experts in theology and stuff like that. But expert in error. Do you follow that? So we need to be expert in allowing the Holy Spirit to lead us so we'll not be astray. Because when these people come with that intelligence, we can easily be swayed. So be careful. Easily be swayed if we don't know yes. our scripture. Amen. Um, <laughs> when you talked about in our own realms, the lost coin came to my mind. Um, because many of us can be experts right here in the house of God. And still do not know Christ. And still be in error. That's yeah, right. Yeah, and and still be in yeah. error. Now, another thing that came to my mind is tele-evangelists. So many of us like to listen to some of them. And to be honest, brethren, some of them have some really good points. Mm -hmm. But the question is, just because you have a good point and you are an error on other points, does that make them a good example for the word of God? No, it doesn't, because many of them will not preach the truth for fear of losing their followers, losing income and support. And so experts, but experts in error, because the truth as contained in the word of God is not being spoken and delivered to the masses who need to hear the word of God in order to be saved. The truth shall set you free, the word of God says. And so we see tele-evangelists falling short in that era of experts and error. So the truth and the error mingle together. It's like iron and clay. That's right. Mixed that together. Would never cleave. And mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. cannot hold. In verse 11 of um, 1 Timoth Timothy 6, it, it says, But thou, Paul is referring to you now, not just Timothy. Timothy is past now. But to us, but thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. These are the things God is seeking for us to, um, to, to, um, for us to, to achieve in life. So these are the things that God endorses or the apostle endorses for us to follow. Follow us from after love. Follow after peace. Paul encourages us to seek after God's kingdom, seek after his righteousness, faith, love, godliness, steadfastness, meekness, and fight the good fight of faith. In verse 20, he tells us to guard the deposit. I don't know if you even know what's a deposit. You know pretty well what's a deposit. Guard the deposit that is entrusted to us. We've been entrusted with the oracles of God. We've been entrusted with, it, with it, eternal life. In other words, protect at all cost the eternal life that is given to you through Christ Jesus. And if, it, if we do that, when Jesus comes, he will seal it with immortality. And we will live with him Can, can I go back to, to verse 11 in First yeah. Timothy 6? 
I mean, before I go to that, let me say something. Truth and error have to be always together. Because if you reckon, you error on itself can stand. Error on itself can stand. So truth and error have to mingle. Truth always presents itself as clarity. But error always have to cling to truth. And truth is a parasite. So without truth, you cannot, and, 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 and evil, you cannot parasite. So wherever truth is, error will find itself because it's a parasite, you have to last to truth. So that's why a lot of people are being deceived because people mingle truth and error. So Paul said, thou, O man of God, or O child of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness and godliness. So when somebody say, oh, if you see something is brewing, walk away or turn your back away. That's not what he say. When somebody tell you flee, what that mean? Run. Run. <laughs> and some of us hang out, entertain, and then we absorb because that's what, when error is whatever and you do whatsoever and you don't know what, then you will be deceived. But the man of God is telling you, when you see this kind of stuff, flee from it and latch on to righteousness, yeah. godliness, patience, love. And a lot and meekness. A lot of us not doing that. We are so attached to error and we kind of get confused because we're not stabilized and let we fall prey to truth. Where is truth? Truth is in the word of God. Truth is in God's people. Truth is wherever God is. So wherever truth is, the enemy will find itself there. And yes. you have to be careful. Yes, yes. That is, that is so true. Wherever the truth is, the enemy will find himself, himself there. Sister Cherubin, the lesson tells us for nearly 2,000 years, the world's smartest people, the experts, believe that the earth sat Im Im immobile in the center of the universe while all the stars and planets orbited in perfect circle. What a false knowledge, isn't it? What a false knowledge. What a false knowledge. If we allow these experts in error, because now they, 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 they understand better than that. Mm -hmm. If we allow these experts in error to cloud our minds with these assumptions, then we'll lose the hope that is in us. The hope of, um, of having Christ and living with him eternally. Because if you sit down and I guess... Uh, entertain these these errors, these experts in errors. If we sit down and entertain them, we find ourselves believing what they're saying. And we, we find ourselves living what they believe. And it's going to be unfortunate and we'll miss heaven, we'll miss eternal life. And when the time comes, we'll say, wow, I did believe. Why didn't I stuck to my belief? But unfortunately, many didn't. It's too late. I have something to say. It's not just sitting and listening to them. Let's say, for instance, we promoting, I mean, educational, I mean, Christian education. And we choose to send our children to a university where they can be taught of God. But at the class, every time you study the Bible, you know, the creation is seven days, six days, and the Sabbath and so on in a literal seven days week. And you grow up in that, you know that whatsoever. Then you go to that university, which is a Christian university. And every, you have class, maybe Monday to Friday or free classes. And every time you go to the class, they're telling you in biology, science today, for instance, is pre predicted or, or assumption that the world begins billions and billions of years ago, and every day you go in the class, they're teaching you that, and you know what you believe, but they're teaching you that, and you cannot go against, you have to do the work according to us, you will not pass the class, you do that to pass the class, and day after day, day after day, day after day, you there for four years. When you come out of that, why a lot of people that go over there in a Christian college, when they come out of there, they become atheists. 
because by beholding, you, you change. For four years, you hang that in your head, in your head, in your head. You start believing it. So it's not just you watch on TV, you watch on this, but you in a system where you're supposed to go and get a Christian education and this, the, 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 professor. yes, professor putting in your head every day. And this is a Christian professor. And they, they know it, they're teaching it because that's the, or how they call it, the outline of the class and you have to teach it. And for years after years, you've been instilling in that and your children come out and start questioning everything. Don't be surprised because wherever truth is, the devil is there and it's large. And the Bible says, by beholding, you become. Every week, every day, you studying that, you teaching that, you researching that, you become, there is no God. We have to be very careful. Before we move on to the next lesson, that's why the word of God says, study to show thyself approved a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And so if these students continue studying the word of God, they will not leave believing what the world has put within them because we know the truth. And that's why a relationship with Christ daily is extremely Mind important. Mind you, I was not talking about worldly institution. I'm I talking know. about Our whatsoever. institution, I know. Yes. Yes. Wonderful. Let's move to Wednesday's lesson, foolishness and wisdom. Foolishness and wisdom. And we know Solomon has a lot to say about foolishness and wisdom. For he was the wisest man ever lived beside Jesus. But he made some of the most foolish decisions as a king. Imagine that. Mm -hmm. The wisest man who ever lived besides Jesus made one of some of the most foolish decisions as a king. In Proverbs, we can see that true Christian education is a son following the instructions of his father, listening and being obedient to the laws of his mother. The parent will point the child to the right path as the child grows. The Bible draws a steady comparison between foolishness and wisdom. The distinction is very clear. God desires us, his people, to seek wisdom, not foolishness, to, to treasure it, and we must, we must not, not just treasure it, but we, we must abound in wisdom. We must be a people of wisdom. Verse 10 through, through 19 opens before us the path of foolishness, how it looks through enticement. And I want to read, I want to read this to you. <clears throat> He says, students of arts and sciences utilize their talents to gain knowledge and to pursue excellence in studies. Teachers, um, teachers of these disciplines do similarly. We can be capable of artistic brilliance and scientific breakthroughs because of knowledge and ability. And wh when I, while I studied this, I, I, remembered, I remembered, you know, in, in this pandemic, we 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 are hoping that we will uh, they will come out soon with this um, vaccine. with this vaccine, and every every is attentive to what Dr. Fauci says. Dr. Fauci says what what Dr. Fauci says seems to be the saith <laughs> the Lord, and um, I'm not saying Dr. Fauci is wrong, but we have to be careful when comparing the um, arts and sciences of this world when, 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 they, when they set aside the, wo the word of God. So I'm, ho I'm hoping, I'm hoping because if, we, if you know they, these, these vaccines, all they're gonna produce is a temporary relief. Hopefully a temporary relief. But for permanent relief, they're not. And we must be very, very careful how we, uh, how we pursue our education in arts and sciences. The lesson also tells us, yet from a Christian perspective, what does a knowledge of the arts and sciences really mean if it does not involve knowing the difference between right and wrong, good and evil, truth and error? You will study and study in education of arts and sciences, 
And sometimes the errors are so plain and so clear, but yet you accept it and you find yourself living it. What good does it do for us? What good does it do if we cannot, if we cannot differentiate the truth and the error that, um, that comes with it? The good and the evil, the wrong and, and the right. I, I think, you know, <laughs> in our society today, um, wisdom, we relate it to higher education. And sometimes with our wisdom and our higher education, we can appear as a fool. Um, take for instance, I heard a story. Prisoners were given a Bible to read and these theologians that are coming to the prison to give Bible studies and to have church on Sunday. An uneducated prisoner took the Bible, started reading it, and presented to the preacher and say, why are we worshiping on Sunday? The preacher said, what do you mean? They said, well, it's, it's in the word of God. It's right here that we should be keeping the seven-day Sabbath. And he was dumbfounded. Simple little things, okay? Was the jailer, was the, um, the jailer um, you know, incompetent? No, they could still read. And it's simple knowledge. Did he have higher education? No, he didn't. But the preacher did. And yet still was coming with foolishness and error to the prisoners, okay? Sometimes we put our salvation in the hands of men, and this is the downfall of many of us. We rely on the pastor. We rely upon our spouses or tele-evangelists to teach us, and we cannot put our soul salvation in the hands of men, and that's our greatest error. We need to study because the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. I mean, but the, fools despise wisdom yeah, and yeah, instruction. That's, what, that's exactly. what I was about to say. Don't forget the last part the, because yeah. I have that text. Yes. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, mm -hmm. but fools despise that's wisdom right. and instruction. Mm -hmm. So we have to know that. Uh, yeah. I mean, go ahead, yeah. Brother Hassan, go ahead. So being obedient to God is knowledge. The opposite of this is foolishness, mm -hmm. without, without a doubt. If we follow God, that's knowledge. And that's why Job 28, 20 said, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to shun evil is understanding. So being obedient to God is knowledge. And the opposite is foolishness. Yes. And you, you made a statement a while ago, which is true. People see error, but they still follow. Why is that? Because they have two entities. One is God, one is the enemy. It's always two, no matter what. The devil is trying to get your mind, mm -hmm. and God is trying to get your mind. So whichever you obey, that's what you are servant to. So when you already have Satan controlling your mind, even though you know it's error, he already controlled your mind, so you automatically go that route, even though you see it's so clear. And that's why God wants our mind. So when whoever have your mind, that's who control you. Mm -hmm. So we have a system everywhere you turn is, conflict and conflict and conflict. I think they stay in our mind right now to know when the time comes, what you will decide. So we have to be very careful because every way in the world, everybody saying something, it's like people confused. But be careful that you don't stand on the word of the Lord. So when that time comes, you already have your mind so programmed to go that route so you will make decisions. So we need to stay in the word in the serve the Lord because when that time happens, you don't want to be a fool because fools will despise wisdom and instruction. So who's a fool? Did the Lord point out in his word who a fool is? That despise wisdom yes. and uh, the instruction. The fool has said in his heart, <laughs> there is no God. Atheist, he's, he's considering them a fool, right? And sometimes even some fools who believe there is a God they are fools in other areas. Exactly, that's true. And the lesson also, um, also said that some people, including the atheists, said 
the more the universe seems comprehensible, the more it also seems pointless. That means the wisdom of God is foolishness to, this, to these people. But to us Christians, it's Christian education. And by this we can walk a little closer to Christ and be like him. Let's close with Thursday's lesson. The Lord answered Job. The Lord answered Job. Many people have asked for an interview with God in order to get some of their questions answered. But you know, Job is one of the few who did. I'm not sure of anyone else besides, besides Job who wanted an interview with God. In answering Job, God drilled him with questions, questions upon questions, questions about creation and sus sustaining the created world. God is the sole sustainer of his creation, and everything lives and is kept through his power. The lesson also reminds us that nature is the servant of his creator. I never thought of it this way. It is so true that nature is the servant mm -hmm. of his creator. Nature bows down to God. When Jesus walked on the sea, or while, he, or while he was resting and sleeping, and we had the storm, that, that, and he calmed the st storm, the disciples said, who is this that even the wind and the wave obey him? They obey him because they know him. They know him as their creator. Now imagine that. The sea and the wind who doesn't speak, they don't, they don't, they don't, they, they have nothing to say like you and I talk. But they see their creator, they know their creator, they bow down to him, they acknowledge him as the creator. How fascinating, and we who are here, we humans who are created in God's image have issues with God as creator. Mm -hmm. We have issues with him as sustainer. Mm -hmm. We have doubts about him as the one who made everything. Now, you know, when we say the word of God contains everything that we need to know, finances, love, forgiveness, everything is there, creation, everything is in this book that you may have a question about, it's in here. Um, and it's so amazing how when all these philosophers were trying to decide, is the world flat? You know, the world must be flat. And when you reach at the end, you're, you're going to just fall off. Remember? Yeah. Okay, Christopher Columbus. That's why he, you know, sailed the world to see what's going on. But right here in this interview, in the book of Job, he tells him that the world is round. It's a sphere. And what is it hung on? He hangs the earth on nothing. So all the information that all these theorists have and have vomited to the world and many are swallowing it, it's contained right here in the word of God for us. If we would just again read and study, the answers have been placed here for men. Mm -hmm. If we would just place ourselves at the footstool of the creator of heaven and earth and just trust him. He has revealed everything to us. And I have a quote from Sister White in for Psalm 19, verse 1. It says, From the stars that in their trackless courses through space followed from age to age their appointed path down to the miniest autumn, the things of nature obey the Creator's will. Everything of nature Everything. Obey the Creator's and will. It, and, and in education, you know, Patriots and Prophets, um, Page 114, she said, there is, there is in nature the continual working of the Father and the Son. Christ says, my Father worketh hitherto, mm -hmm. and I work. So creation reveals God as creator. He reve creation reveals God as, as sustainer. Mm -hmm. to the less, and that's what um, the Bible tells us. And I really believe all the issues that we are going through in this life, in this world today and before and tomorrow 
if we would incorporate scripture, the Bible, mm. with it, we would have solved a lot of the problems that we, we, are, we are going oh, yeah. through in, in, oh, yeah. in, in this life. But unfortunately, we set aside the word of God mm. and we think that we can achieve our goal just through arts and sciences and believe that the word of God is, um, I guess, is void, unfortunately. Expert in errors. <laughs> yes, experts yeah, expert in, in errors. Error. They're leading us the path they know and uh, the whole, fo whole follow. But we need to go back to death save the Lord. So I, 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 must, I must thank God that we have the Bible that is different. We know through the word of God, life on earth with all its beauty and complexity is not a result of chemical bil um, billions of years of uh, go forming by chance into simple life and will randomly selected and evolved into all that lives and moves today. The Bible tells us that God spoke and it came, it came forth. He commanded he st and he stood, fast. He, s he stood fast. He said, let there be light. And guess what? There was light. So it is all about God who created not just something that came out of a bang and um, something happens. Came That's right, no big bang, bang theory. Um, I want to leave Job 38, 19. Um, light doesn't dwell in a place, but a way. Okay? A way. Whose way? The ways of the Lord. That's but where light dwells. And you use the word way. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure if you, if you know that way, W-A-Y, is in capital because Jesus said, I am the way. That's right. The truth and the so way. So light dwells with God. That's right. The Bible tells us God is light. Mm -hmm. And in him is no darkness at all. Amen. So we must understand, understand when we look at, when we study arts and sciences in the light of scripture, that God is the creator of everything. So I, I, I must say I thank God that we have the Bible that tells us different. We know through the word of God, life on earth with all its beauty and perplexity is not a result of chemically billions of years ago forming or chemicals billions of years ago forming by chance into simple, simple life and were randomly selected and evolved into all all that lives and moves today. We're no different now. Unfortunately, science doesn't know that or doesn't believe it. They have to, they have to see or experiment. Mm -hmm. And in the experimentation, then they will assess it and say, yes, this is true. If not, it is not. So as we close, Scripture leaves us with zero doubt that God is not only creator of everything, but he sustains everything as well. Any thought before we close? Um, Colossians 1 verse 17, and he, the Lord, is before all things, and by him all things consist. So he is the reason that we all move and live and have our being. If the Lord ceases to have everything consist, guess what? None of us would exist. And so I encourage everybody to trust the Lord, trust his word, take him at his word, because he does want what's best for us, which is life, and not just life, but life eternal. Amen. Any thoughts? My closing thought is on Job. God, the Lord answered Job. Just like Job, sometimes we have questions. And when we have questions, we ask God the question. God already answered us because he have his words and the answer is in the word of God. And if we don't accept God's answer, then we'll accept somebody else's answer. So when we have question and we say, oh, the Lord didn't answer my question and I'm going to find it this way because you have not tapped in the word to re so God can reveal the answer to you and you go after other gods. So let us always go back to death save the Lord because we have all the answers. And what God wanted to reveal, he already revealed all the answers in his word. 
And whatever he needs to reveal later, when you are saved, he will reveal it. But the answers are in his words. I want to leave you with this thought in, teacher's, in the teacher's comment. And it says, nature is God 24 hours a day, 3D multimedia, stereophonic revelation of himself. It requires no paid subscription, no streaming devices, and is everywhere and always accessible. For this reason, an appeal to ignorance for not knowing and following God will be inadmissible in the final evaluation. I pray by God's grace that you will study, study, study to show yourself approved. So when, when trying time comes, you'll be able to say it is written, it is written, it is written. May God bless you as you continue to study and live for him. God bless you and see you next Sabbath.